A very good afternoon to you. Great to see you from wherever you're in the world watching us on Channel Sports Sunday. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Uh, well on the show today, there's quite a few things to talk about. But majorly, it will be about the FIFA Women's World Cup, what has been happening. Uh, we'll take a look at all of that and it will dominate our thoughts. We'll spare a thought for football transfers and the things happening across uh, the globe. Uh, but... Um, we can't be excused if a lot of the things we do today is around the FIFA Women's World Cup, especially because Nigeria will be playing tomorrow and there's every chance that uh, the Super Falcons will qualify uh, to uh, the next round. All right, uh, I'm not alone on the show today. Ken Ochanogo uh, is with me and, of course, uh, my colleague uh, Cecilia Amorogwe <laughs> right there in Brisbane is getting ready uh, to come on. But first, uh, Ken uh, is with us. Ken, uh, I can see you all smiles. It's good to do this together again. Um, greater expectations, not, not, not greater, greater expectations as we take on, as we take on uh, at the Irish ladies tomorrow at uh, 11 a.m. Nigerian time. Uh, it, that is what it's going to look like. Formerly, we used to press calculator so to say, okay, fine, how are we going to get there coming from bottom? But right now, we are pressed calculator from the top. <laughs> we are pressed calculator on top. We are sitting on top of, we are sitting on top, at of the table. And then, um, not just sitting there, our destiny is in our hands. But this World Cup has been a World Cup of surprises. So you might find yourself at the top, and then you know the next day you find yourself you know at the bottom. But I I do believe that since it is not a must win for us, since it is just for us to say okay, let us just go there and see if we can get a point. But then the Irish are, they've come here, they've lost two close match, two, two close games. The one they, 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 they lost to the host is the one they lost to the Canadians are all games that you said they were not they were, they, were, they, were, they were not dominated. They got there. So uh tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, Yemi, tomorrow, Yemi. Um and I don't want to start, I think I'm can't um I'm, I'm Look, watch me well. Look, I'm trying to be the right way. I'm trying to, uh, to get my, my chickens, you understand, uh, uh, before they are hatched. I am, I'm, I'm greedy. I'm greedy. I'm greedy. You know, uh, I'm looking at um, I'm looking at sixty thousand dollars. Uh, sixty thousand dollars for the girls. That is extra thirty. I'm looking at extra three hundred and ten thousand dollars for the Nigerian Football Federation. 1.56 million you know, uh, dollars you know, they were giving them. But entering that round of 16, you mean, you mean $310,000 will be added. But for the girls, it is 100%. So basically, for the girls, for Nigeria, for Africa, for Africa because before now, only Nigeria had won a game. For Africa because Morocco, after a 6 0 pounding, have won a game. For Africa because, you know, uh, uh, South Africa says, yes, we can be done, but we know... Uh, naturally we we'll get there. For Africa, because Zambia also are all there. All the African teams have picked at least a point. It's been a good outing for Africa, but it, it, it can be better, and it will be better, Yemi. It will be better. And I know the creamy one is right there uh, in Brisbane, trying to give us update, but Yemi, back to you. <laughs> all right. Uh, as you can see, Cecilia is with us. And Cecilia, greetings to you. Thanks for uh, finding time out of your busy schedule uh, to be with us on the show. Yeah, I mean, it's a pleasure to be here on the program, Yemi and Ken. It's good to see you again. <laughs> All right. Um, we, we, we were preparing to go a different way, but since this is with us, and we can't keep our waiting, time, time differentials yes. and everything, let's just go into that segment where we talk about the Super Falcons and all the things happening uh, in Group B. And, of course, it is brought to you uh, by Standing IBTC, the official uh, insurance partner of uh, the Super uh, Falcons. All right. Uh, since you are in Brisbane, Cecilia, let's uh, go to you first. Uh, Ken has uh, some questions to ask, but I'll go first. Uh, and I'm going to ask you... No, 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 you. Let's, let's go to CC. Yes, let's go to CC. Yeah. CC, uh, CC, CC, CC. Uh, She's on, you, are, you and I, we are, on this show, we are foreigners today. This is on ground. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're going, we, we just want to ask, as the mood, you, you know, you were telling us how hot beats and everything, the girls were, how they're focused on the game uh, against the Irish. You were privileged to see the training. And, I mean, as the mood shifted, or it's still the same? 
it it happens at all because you know at first we're thinking about uh, if they were going to do the warm-ups and everything because some of the players going down with the knock that came against Australia we saw how physical the Australians were but when I spoke with the coach today he said nothing like that I mean all the players have to get that so no injury worries so that is settled on its own and then you you talked about the mood in camp yes they are still hyped up they're still ready. It's just a draw they need to get into the round of 16. But then all of them are saying that they want that three points. Get into it, get the three points, stop the group and continue building on that momentum that they started you know, right from the very beginning. I mean, we are having a Super Four Cons at team. For the first time, I just go through the group stage remaining unbeaten. Remember the last time they beat a, a, a European side? It was far back in 1999 when they also had their best outing, right? They also had six points in that and they moved into the, the next round, the knockout stage of the FIFA Women's World Cup. Now, for the second successive time, they are trying to do that again. They did that in 2019 in France. And then in 2013, they're trying to do that right here in Australia, already on four points. And if they beat New Zealand or even a draw, that means they remain unbeaten and also move mm -hmm. on to the next round. And they'll become the first African country to be able to do it for the third time, moving out from the group, group stage. I think that is a plus for the Super Bowl of Nigeria. And that is the mood they are in going into it. They want to make history. Remember when Namibu was talking, they want to make history. They want to set the pace. They know how important Nigeria is to Africa. And that's the name they are representing here, not just Nigeria, but Africa. We're happy at first that Morocco were leading, you know, well, you know, <laughs> were leading at the point, but somehow it just didn't work out because uh, uh, they beat South Korea. We're thinking, okay, with that, that will happen. And Colombia <laughs> was beating Colombia long ago. But the Germans have scored now. Is that one or the so Morocco, that's why like beating South Korea may not just make it out of the group stage and South Africa also in a very nice position because we've seen what they've, they've been, the two draws they've had so they are not really holding themselves in glory for Zambia oh a story for another day so you've seen it's the African and Craig so, still into the park showing everyone the way really wants to I remember when uh, the ambassador uh, the I'm talking the high commissioner uh the Nigeria high commissioner in um uh, in in Australia, he yeah. talks about like a bragging right that is it's what the super focus have done here in this country is more like a bragging right for all of them, so they can raise their head up and say, look, we've got a team that really can shake the world, and that's what they're doing right now. All right, um, uh, good to hear, uh, uh, Cecilia. I know you you did a rap for us yesterday. You caught up. Uh, with the players. We're, we're going to listen to that. I know it's going to feel a bit strange listening to yourself, but another important thing that you helped us to do that we want to quickly let our viewers see uh, is that, uh, of course, uh, there's been a lot of support uh, for the Super Falcons and uh, a lot of high-ranking officials are beginning to sing the praise of the girls for the things that they've been doing. Uh, NFFS Vice President Felix Ayatiago uh, was there, had a few words to say. Uh, and of course, the Nigeria Eye Commissioner to Australia, Anderson Maduike, was also there. Let's listen to both of them and help us get some perspective of how uh, impressed a lot of people are by the performance of the Super Falcons so far. I feel proud, I feel excited. Uh, to me, this is national assignment. Uh, this is period of competition. Everybody must be involved in one way or the other. Uh, naturally, given my passion in the work I do, I have to be here to encourage our Falcons, who have so far done us proud, done the country proud, because uh, diplomacy and national assignment is about visibility. And I'm sure when they see some of us around, they'll be very much encouraged to put in more effort in ensuring that that come out very successful in this competition. As far as I know, the federal government, NFF, all appropriate you know, uh, agencies have put in their best. Well, in terms of finances, I'm sure the federal government is doing their best, NFF is doing their best, and the players also understand it will never be enough. But for now, from what I'm observing, everybody's in high spirit. Like I told them, whatever that's due for you, attain, accomplish this great height. 
whatever is due to you, we know Nigerians, we know our government, they will all come back to them. Just like uh, millions of Nigerians back home, um, I'm a very proud person. Uh, the team has really made us proud. Um, the most talked about team in this competition is a super Falcon. It's not an easy feat. Uh, they have done very well to have gotten to where they are now. Uh, they will go very far in this particular competition. So we are very proud of them and for what they have done for the country. The Super Falcon would not have gotten to where they are without the massive support of the Federation and Nigeria. So there is no conflict. You can see if there is conflict, it will reflect even on the result. So there are so many speculations. People will always uh, see things from a different angle. I believe um, uh, the, the team is doing well, that is the most important thing, and I want them to continue. So if we get back to the old kind of conversation, that will be a drawback. So I think we are, we've moved forward and we want people to support them for what they are already doing for the country. All right, uh, you are listening to uh, Felix Hayas here, good day. Uh, first uh, uh, LFF vice president, uh, and of course, uh, Nigeria's high commissioner to Australia, Anderson um, Anduvike. Uh, all right, so um, Jimmy Ogulano joins us now. Uh, and of course, I want to hear a few words from Jimmy, then we'll go to, back to Ken. Cecilia is here, so we're going to have a robust conversation. And I, I just hope we'll be able to do anything apart from the Super Falcon uh, today. But uh, Jimmy, <laughs> you listen, welcome. Uh, yeah, thank you. You braved the hearts to be here. Mm. I appreciate it. Thank you. But your thoughts on what you've listened to? Well, I think it's um, instructive that at this point in time, everybody is towing in line. We're not talking at disparate ends. We, we all are united to see that as much as possible, the most successful uh, team in African... Most successful uh, national team. The most successful na national team in African football um, get to do well in this particular competition. You know, they've braved the odds. They've um, risen above adversity. To ensure as much as possible, they've given us something to be uh, cheerful about. So I think it's um, it's really encouraging to see everyone uh, toe in line. We all are, you know, speaking the same language. We want them uh, to succeed, and we just put aside everything that happened before the competition, and just to make sure that you know, at the end of the day, I want to celebrate every brand that has been supportive of um, women's Super football Falcons, in yeah. in Nigeria. Um, Super Falcons. I think it's something that is very noteworthy at this point in time because um, we always clamor for uh, sponsorships, we always clamor for, you know, establishments to come support the game and, you know, to have, you know, sponsors here and there, sponsoring engagement, sponsoring uh, the national team itself, sponsoring the media to go there. We need to really, really celebrate them at this point in time. And, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really encouraging to see what the girls have done so far. All right. It's really encouraging. And, and, and to just go back to what Cecilia said, okay, it was Ken that mentioned that mm. uh, our destiny is in our own hands. Uh, Ken, uh, let me yield the floor to you. I'm very sure you have quite a few things to, to say and to even ask Cecilia as well. We're excited in the Lagos studio. And just like yeah. Jimmy said, we're beginning to si sing the same song. Ah, uh, um, I what, what this the same song I was talking about here, but yeah, like, like we are saying, um, <laughs> Uh, Jimmy just said about the most successful national team in Africa, which is uh, our own uh, Super Falcons, you know. So, uh, one of only seven teams on other countries in the world to have attended all the World Cups since 1991 in the United in China. Mm, and then, you know, we, we, we were here sometime, I think when the U.S. was started in 1999, uh, the teams of... Uh, um, in, in, Kiru, in, Kiru, uh, in Kiru Koseme, you know, uh, Omolov and the rest of them all, Messi, Akide Udo, I mean, that, that, that team did qualify, you know, for the, for, the, for, the, for the quarterfinals, and we came from that group. We were in the same group with the host USA in, 19, in, 19, in 1999, and then, of course, we lost we lost to the USA. I think it was a one bashing also that the USA beat us, but the North Koreans and the Norwegians, you know, we, you know, uh, we got better of them, and then we qualified for the quarterfinals. So basically, we are looking at the, the thing is not so much focused. This this World Cup here, you hear me? 
uh, uh, since I don't know, this World Cup is one World Cup where it's the most unpredictable World Cup. You look, you look at the, uh, the New Zealand uh, uh, group, the New Zealanders beat the Norwegians. You understand? Then the Philippines beat the New Zealanders. And guess what happened? The Norwegians that the New, 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 New Zealanders did not hammer the Philippines by 6 six, 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 six nothing are qualifying. Right now, the host nation is out, and that is the thing. So you will we see, we say France being unable to beat Jamaica. You understand? I went to, to beat Brazil. Uh, when the, now the Colombians are beating, you know, uh, uh, they're getting the better of the Germans. So you, you know, anything can happen in this, in, in this group. The thing is, we will not, our girls should not lose focus tomorrow. Uh, uh, it, 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 I think what has taken us this far, apart from probably the talented group, is the management of the game. Uh, that the, we, um, the, you go with a mindset that you, we are not going to get beat. All the, I don't, you know, I am not comfortable saying, oh, well, we want to go for all three points. I'm not comfortable for that. Get what you want and move on. It's all you need is qualify. Sure. What I did, zero, zero, or yeah. one thousand zero, zero can take you there. Get it. Yeah. Build your team on the counter. I'm not. I'm not a coach, so I don't know how to. I don't know what to tell the players, whatever. But I'm saying that the result we need is what the minimum what we take is what we take us there. And if you don't expose yourself, if we can build on the counter, if if uh, 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 if she is what she is doing, put and then uh, maybe probably you can still bring her uh, as a start back from the bench if she's not too fit. Don't risk her and then you know because when the moment she entered, I think she was the game changer in our game against Australia because the moment she entered, all focuses were on her. The, 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 uh, what can what this Barcelona star, what this world star is going to do to us, and that was in fact the jittery, that uh, uh, confusion between the goalkeeper and also the uh, uh, the, the, the last defender from where she cast in and scored that wonderful goal. Also, with her presence, her presence alone is enough for Nigeria at this level because she's a big star. We must recognize that. Um, so, like I'm saying, we should not go for the job. We should always say, look, let us go all out because we want to go and beat them. My advice is for her to have a very compact team, a very good with synergize, understand us, fight for each other, plan together as a team. Do not protect your back four. And I tell you this, by, 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 we started by 11 a.m. By 1 p.m. Nigerian time tomorrow, I think there should be dancing in the streets of Lagos, in the dancing in the streets of Tugui, in the streets of Abba, in the streets of Zamfara, in the streets of, you know, of, of Ogume. And I tell you this, that is what we look forward to. It's not going to be easy, but it is doable. Our destiny is in our hands. Yeah, I agree. I agree that our destiny is in our hands. Let, let me just go back to uh, Cecilia. And, I mean, one question a lot of people want to ask is, you are not the coach. We know you are not the coach, but we also know that you're close to some of the players. And... The reason why I ask about a mood shift, Ken is already saying something I agree with. Do whatever you need to qualify, even if it's not a win. The barest minimum is a draw. Do it and qualify. But does it look like we're probably going to set out to go for the win uh, tomorrow? Or is the mindset of getting the results, I mean, what, what, what have you been able to glean? It's not easy, I know, because nobody's going to show you uh, their notepad or whatever they're planning for the game. I understand that. From speaking to the players, do, does it look like uh, Ireland is the weakest, so we go and beat them, or let's just go and get the result? Yeah, I think uh, when I spoke with some of the players, they are not complacent at all. That, you need to give that to them. And they're not saying that because Ireland are already out of the competition. You see, what there, there are some countries, that, according to what one of the players told me, that you've seen some countries who just want to dent you know, the record of a particular team. So because Ireland will be aiming to do that, and that's why they are not underrating the Irish team at all. Because most of the fans are in town. They traveled down to Australia to cheer their team to victory. Brazil did that uh, against uh, France, you know, last night, but it didn't happen for them. That's why the whole, the whole stadium was filled up with Brazilian fans. City of Yellow, that was all we saw, you know, last night. But then tomorrow, we may just have another thing like that because the Irish, they are in town trying to support their team to see how they can get at least a point leaving the, the, the World Cup. They are making their debut. Of course, we all know one of the eight teams that are making their debut at this World Cup. So that's what the Falcons are saying. Look, they are having a team who have nothing to lose. They want to go home on a high and they are playing an African nation. And the fact that we know African countries struggle against European countries is, is a fact that has been established over the years. So on the Falcons, we try as much as possible 
to beat another European side, you know, uh, against uh, the, the, when they face the Republic of Ireland on Monday. So that's what's on the minds of the players. The fact that they want to make Africans proud, the fact that they want to beat the team that every beckon of hope, so to speak, to African countries coming into the World Cup. When you have four slots come to the World Cup, you want to build on that because some African countries, like South Africa, for instance, want to beat to see if they can host the Women's World Cup. And the only way to do that is to have more African teams actually progressing, you know, not just coming, compete and go back. So that's why the Falcons are setting the pace. So the players understand that. They know that they are on a mission. They know that they are representing a whole continent, not just Nigeria. So having that in mind, that's the, the mood they actually, you know, that's what they have going into this game against Republic of Ireland. So no underrating the, the Irish at all. And that's why they're saying, yes, they understand they need a point to qualify. But then they want all three points, get into the back and continue, you know, building on what they started. All right. Uh, let me come to Jimmy. People like Jose Mourinho have taught us that at the end of the day is a result that, that matters. Matter. Nobody's going to remember how well you how played well you paid, yeah. because at the end of the day, yeah. history only remembers, remembers who won. Exactly. And I don't know why we all seem to be agreeing today. In years past, I probably wouldn't have agreed with Ken. Mm. Uh, I'll say, no, why, why don't you go? But with what we have seen in this tournament, it's safe to just... Uh, because. As long as we don't lose, we are in it. Whether we qualify first or second is, is a story for another day. Okay. But as long as we don't lose. So okay. do you agree that, with that line of thought that, look, going to that game, the, set up not to lose? The telling from what Cecilia has just said, you know, the expectations of everyone on the continent right now mm -hmm. is that we are flying the flag very high. Mm -hmm. And we as ambassadors, I mean, our girls as ambassadors of African football, they should as much as possible strive to do the needful. Mm -hmm. Um, I sort of disagree. I feel that we should go for the juggler, really, because you look at it critically. Um, we may be facing, you know, if you come second, depending on what happens in the other yeah, game, we may be, you know, um, actually facing England. And, um, you know, despite the fact that we also say, oh, as much as possible, whichever team that you are placed with, go there, get the needful done. We also want to look at it from this point of view that, look, Morocco got into the semifinal of the World Cup as much as possible, we're elated. We also want these girls to as much as possible progress. And you may think, okay, let's avoid England and all that. But I will feel that as much as possible, um, we have the Irish to take care of. They've not... Um, so the safe way not, to go is to I, win. I, I actually think that we should go for the juggler. That's I mean, the safe way to go. Let's take every game as seriously as it comes. Because we've seen, you know, the, co the, the, the cohesiveness of this particular team. We've seen the way the girls have set up. And Ken talked about game management. Absolutely, you know, you want to give it to Randy Wardrum. I think it was for the first time that I ever saw that. I, I, I felt his impact as a coach, you know. In the maybe two games? In the two games. No, the second game. I, I mean, the first game for me, it was more about the determination of the girls. But, you know, when you consider the fact that we had been talking about Oshola, the hunger missing in Oshola, and he, you know, putting, him on, uh, putting her on the bench, and she comes right in, inspires the team. That hunger was there. You saw it. it was you know, he was visible. And, you know, she, the girls, they were absolutely delighted. They had someone that could, you know, inspire them to get going and all that. So I will feel that at this point in time, it's just safe to go for the juggler, go for the win as much as possible. Because we also have enough talent to replete on the bench. The likes of HAG are, they are, they are not yet playing. You know, they have not really played. They have not started, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, you've got quality on the bench enough to, you know, say, okay, if the girls go into this particular game, there are a few of them, there are concerns with yellow cards and all that. We need to start giving some of them the chance. You know, you have Aluse on the right-hand side, you know, have gotten uh, a yellow card and also a couple of them also. We need to be very careful the way we actually do play. But I feel that we should go for the juggler. Use a few more girls, but be very, very attack minded. Let's go. Let's forget the fact that we just want to. We are, by God's grace, we'll get there, uh, you know, winning the game. We'll do the needful. The girls have shown that, you know, they are calm enough. There's a mixture of youth and experience if you look at the way they have set up the way so they you're are not playing. afraid of a soccer punch at there's, all. there's nothing at to be afraid of for that, we are playing against a team that is not going to i mean what, what's the shocker there for us at this point in time where is the soccer going to where is the soccer but, but the loss from? could be a dent 
A loss could be a dent, but the, that's why I'm saying as much as possible, we should not go with the mentality of that... Of trying to defend. Of trying to defend. Let's just go for the juggler. I mean, whichever way it goes, we want the, the success of the team, but the end result is what we should be more particular about. I, I'm enjoying this. I want to listen to Ken again. It will go on a break. I mean, it's getting exciting here in the studio. We'll go on a break, and uh, then we'll come back for more. Join us again. All right, welcome back. Interesting conversations we're having all over, even off camera. Uh, all well, all smiles, different perspectives, different ways uh, to look at everything. And Ken was eager to go. So let me just go back to Ken. Uh, you listen to Jimmy, and um, I, I want to see where Ken goes. Now listening to Jimmy, where is the balance? You, you want to get the result, but you don't want to suck up points. Yeah, me, give me blood the heart. So, <laughs> yeah, you know that those of us who have seen, we have seen a lot in this game, man. Eh? So, so that, look at you, we have, look at the Colombia now. Just, just shocked, just shocked the Germans. You understand? A very physical side. I just told you that you know we saw how uh, the uh, uh, the French uh, uh, they couldn't they couldn't beat Jamaica. But then they, you know when Brazil came, their physical their physical uh, 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 nature in, in, in their features they took it they took it over and then they, they, they showed they showed the Brazilians it was you know a, a showman. The, this 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 Colombian team I've just watched a kid uh, a 18 year old kid who plays for Real Madrid uh, Alinda Caicedo. Uh, I, I tell you this girl I, I, I want to say she she looks. She looks every inch like Messi, yeah. and uh, she, she is good. But the, 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 like I, the, 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 let me go back to the Nigerian side. Um, like I said, I'm not saying we shouldn't win. A win, a win helps us. A win, win, a win helps us. Uh, that, that, that the story I seen there. Morocco, Morocco after after collecting from Germany. They want to beat the South Koreans. Uh, you know, you know, in Nigeria we say you go collect. You understand? So some people they collect some they give. After giving a look at the Germans now, that you know going on high, and somebody said, uh, uh, I think Mario Lee was saying somewhere in our grass. Look, you win one game, I've already crowned you the world champion. But the Colombians have come back now to shock, to shock, to, to, to shock them. And then that is that is the thing. So it, it, it this has been a World Cup of shocks. Is is not the normal World Cup? I've just mentioned the Jamaicans. They are good. I want you to have what you say. They are good. Jamaicans are good. They, in fact, their game against Panama, of course, they won. They can even Panama plays football. The Zambians have made Africa proud. You know I mean, you have I mean, you, they're just lacking it in that last moment, and then when they want to go back there, you know. The South Africans and then the, the Moroccans have just picked this win against the Koreans. So, what else are we talking about here? The thing is, like I'm saying, it is game management. If you have, if you have to qualify by not winning, it doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, a, a typical uh, a, a manager in the world is my, my, my Jose Mourinho. How he sets up his team not to lose. Into that, that is our focus. I'm not saying we should not go there to beat the pledge. I'm saying we should set out our team not to lose, not to not not to lose, and hit them with a soccer punch. It will come. We have fast players there. We have players who can change the game. I've been so thrilled with Ajibade. I'm not talking about pain. Pain doing so well in one year, and then uh, uh, Asisat herself coming on the show. We've changed the centre back. I mean, we're pushing, we're removing the experienced and slower player with the players who have the, you know, who, who, who can, you, you can outpace them and whatever it is. So, I'm, I'm thrilled, but I have also watched the Irish. I watched their games against Australia, they were unlucky to know, uh, uh, not to win that game. I watched their game against Canada, and I tell you this, the Irish are not a pushover. Forget that they are the bottom of that, they are out and whatever. They want to go out with something, but I, I hope they will not go out with anything from Nigeria. We, we can give them one point, I mean, so that they will not go empty-handed, if possible, as long as both sides, at the end of the day, uh, uh, in negotiation. It is called a win-win. We -win. win by not losing, getting a point, and we win by qualifying. But if we have a point to beat them and move on, why not? Why not? I will celebrate. All I want to celebrate is a qualification, $60,000 for the girls, and extra $310,000 for the Nigerian Football Federation. Yeah, me, not that my mind day. And that is what I'm talking about here. But Jimmy, Jimmy, calm down. I know that you want us to win. But then, uh, uh, was, was it there? Jimmy, was it the, the Portuguese team? That we're not drawing, 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 drawing. I want them to win the uh, uh, and yeah. the European, European yeah. champion. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter how you get there. The important thing is the end result that matters. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Let, let's just go to CC. CC talked about um, Brazilians, I mean, painting everywhere with their colors and all that. 
uh, with what you've seen, uh, and you also told us that the Irish are in town anyway. So in terms of, I mean, having your people around, in terms of support, uh, what do you think the Super Falcons will get tomorrow from what you've seen uh, in terms of Nigerians around, in terms of, okay, the Australians there and all that, uh, how, the level of support that the Super Falcons will get tomorrow? Yeah, the thing is, we don't really have uh, as much Nigerians in the Brisbane, Nigerian community. We don't have so many of them. Like, you have a from or Sydney. That's the difference. But, but I think uh, from what the ambassador, uh, the Nigerian Commission has in Australia told us is the fact that they'll try as much as possible to see how they can mobilize Nigerians to actually come to the city. But Nigerians, the few of them that actually came to watch the game against Australia, we saw, that's why the fact that they were very few, like less than 15 or something, but you could hear their voice very loud. So that support was there. They were ready to support the team. They were there, you know, sharing them up and everything. But I think we're also going to see something like that. And that's what I, I'll watch out for tomorrow before the games start. It's going to be 8 p.m. Australian time here. But I know in Nigeria, it's going to be 11 a.m. in the morning. But so they'll have time to actually come to the stadium. So I'll try to look at this for most of them to see how many of them are able to make it straight to the stadium. But the fact is, we don't have so many Nigerians there in Brisbane like you have in other parts of Australia. So the few that are here, I mean, they will be willing to support. Because after the game against the Super after the game against um, Australia, we saw how, you know, they came out like few, but then the voices and everything kind of can overshadow the Australians, of course, who were quiet after losing at home. That's why that almost 49,000 people at the stadium, almost 50,000 people at the stadium cheering them, you know, they, 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 I mean, that alone dampened the, the, the enthusiasm they actually had going into the game. But I think we are going to be having the support because the bragging right now is with Nigeria. And so if you're going to be having, we'll definitely not be having as much fans, you know, as we had, you know, in the game against um, Australia. So obviously, I think we should be able to see one or two, I mean, some Nigerians who will come to see the game. And then I, I think that the support obviously will be there. But the supporters club couldn't make them. No, I don't know if they're still going to come, but we don't have the supporters club. Usually you see them traveling around, beating the drums and all. But the drums and the sound you, you heard, you know, at that last uh, game was actually from a couple of some Nigerian, you know, uh, Nigerians who are residing in Brisbane, you know, aiming to actually support the team. And that's very good because a typical Nigerian is a supporter and we, we roll out the drums at every opportunity uh, that we get. All right, since is still with us, let's do a quick introduction in, in the studio. Uh, Kwame Ajala is with us now and uh, he's been listening to everything uh, that, that we've been saying. Maybe he's going to help us stay in between. Ken on one side, Jimmy on one side. I'm sitting on the fence. Uh, Kwame, it's good to have you uh, in, in, in the studio. And straight away, you listen to both of them. So where, where do you stand on tomorrow's game? I think the only way I differ with Ken was the issue of uh, giving the Irish one point. I think that is match fixing. <laughs> no, any other way. So I, I, I don't think this uh, part of what to part of that. Uh, yeah. The Africans were a big team in 82. And that's why we started playing the uh, last set of matches simultaneously. So uh, the... the, the um, a wardrobe has uh, done something in this tournament. He has shown that um, he can actually take the bull by the horn. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's not under pressure tomorrow. Uh, he needs a draw. But the Falcons should not be playing for a draw tomorrow. They will go there, play their normal game. Because uh, the danger there for them is this. Uh, you have the Irish. Uh, they want to try some players who have not really uh, played. Because this, for them, this is like a dead mm -hmm. rubber. And uh, I think uh, the Super Falcons being the lowest ranked team in this group... Uh, do not, I, I don't think they, they will fear the Irish. Yes, they know the job is yet to be done. Mm. They need to uh, put the finishing uh, touches there tomorrow. They will have uh, less respect for them. They, yes, so yes. But I don't think they will go mm. there and start looking for that job. Mm. They will go there and express <laughs> themselves. Okay, if, if I understand you, mm. you know, where I struck a chord with Ken yeah. is that you should go into that game and not give them the opportunity of a soccer punch. So from where you stand, you, we don't have anything to be afraid of from the Irish. Yes, we don't have. Uh, we don't have because uh, they, are, they are dead and buried. At this point. They, at this point, they are mm. dead and buried. Uh, the Super Falcons have something to, to fight for. for. Yeah. And I think that is what uh, the uh, pendulum will swing in favor of the Super Falcons tomorrow. And they have the momentum going for and them. And they, 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 they have the players. Wow. Okay.
We are not, we are not in a lock court, but, but I have to let Ken, I have to let Ken say something. It's two against uh, one. Ken now. is used to the Palava way now, so he's, he's, he's the Palava so, master. He knows so, the other So then Ken again, and I can see Cecilia smiling as well, so I'll get to Cecilia in a bit. But, but Ken, mm. uh, has come in, says he doesn't agree. I, I know you're trying to say a draw is a win-win for both of us. They go with something, we go with something. Oh, okay. yeah. but, they are, but they are saying, look, why should you give them anything? Yeah. You see, if giving them does not hurt you, why not? You understand? I'm not saying, I'm only, what I'm saying is that set <laughs> up the team, set up the team not to lose. Set up the team uh, uh, to achieve your objective. Oh. Our objective is to qualify. You understand? Our it is not a a must win game for us. I'm not saying what well, you see. Sometimes you set up your game not setting up your game not to lose also means you are you want to achieve victory. Sometimes you you are playing a team that is more talented than you have your approaches. Sometimes you are playing as a faster than you have your approaches. Some people, so you look at what you have. It is called game management. You look at what you have and what your opponents have, and then you approach it that way. Our ultimate is to qualify. To be the Irish, beautiful. It is sweet. It sounds sweet, but. If we can qualify by not beating them, why not go and why not do that? Instead of exposing yourself, you go and attack and you get your, you set up yourself for a soccer punch. And then you now start struggling and do what you want to do. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying at any point in that game, we should not be behind. We should try as much as possible not to chase the game. And that is that is that is what I believe the, 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 the team we, you know we set out to. Sometimes you see a you see a manager add one extra midfielder to his you know, to his side, you remove from the attack to add not not to defense to choke up, to, to protect the back four and retain, retain possession. That is what it is. One concise pass. We, 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 have, we have players, like I said, that can make it on that particular day. And I do believe that tomorrow by 11 a.m., that is what we are going to see. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't want to chop breakfast tomorrow. I want to give breakfast. That is what I'm saying here. Calm down, guys. I want, I want to give breakfast. And then uh, if it is possible, I know that uh, then uh, CC will be having dinner. We can also look at CC serve dinner in Brisbane. Why we serve them free fast, you know, right here. That is just my position. I'm with I'm with Ope, I'm with Jimmy, but I'm only saying uh, let us thread softly. Let us achieve our aim. Superior intelligence, superior superior tactical uh, you know, uh, tactics will take us there. Conserve our strength for us to say from there oh, we are going to the next, we are going to the quarter, we are going to the quarterfinals. I think that's what we're looking at from now on. Because if we go and chase the game and we know uh, we lose and it happens, we might, you might find ourselves not qualifying because there is still a possibility of even dropping the group of us not qualifying that is the truth uh, so let us just look at it and make sure that yes we qualify tomorrow you know by proper game management that is my position i'm not saying we should go all out we don't need that we will not need that move we need to qualify and we will qualify the team has done well so far and i will know that Okay, uh, let's go to Cecilia. I, I, I mean, I want to ask a question. We'll get back to the Super Falcons, but I mean, so that we don't disrespect the other teams in the group. I mean, let's say a thing or two. Uh, the Australians, Sam Kerr is back. She's training. We're hearing she's going to play. And I'm, I'm very sure everybody in Australia will be rooting for uh, the Matildas. And so Australia, Canada, I mean, from the vibes you're getting uh, in town, how do you think the Australians want to approach this, um, are, are they going to go all out or uh, they'll be, are they keeping their eye on what is happening with Nigeria uh, and, and, and the Irish, uh, you know, because that might factor into how they qualify as well. You know, the Australians, especially the journalists, did not really understand the civil forecast. They don't understand how powerful they are when it comes to women's football. They underrated them. And that's something they don't want to do against the Canadians. They understand the Canadians. The coach was saying they played them several times. They know how to play. They know their star players. So they are evenly matched. So when you have these two teams together, and from the feelers, from the journalists, and from the fans, they are not happy with what the coach did because according to them, that he built the team around Sam Kerr. So missing Sam Kerr resulted to him not being able to beat Nigeria, not knowing how good Nigeria is. I had to start educating some of them. The star players that we have, because they only know Aziz Atoshola, they didn't know there is a certain desire of partners who has not even played. They didn't know that it is a money gift who has not even who has, is yet to play. So we have the stars, they are there. So that what they did to Nigeria is obviously not what they're going to do against the Canadians because they know they are star players. They played each other. And the coach understands that he may not continue with his job if he if he didn't get out of the group stage. So what uh, according to what the coach said, 
even if they don't have some care, even if she's not 100 percent fit, they are going to go all out and beat the Canadians. They are, they've forgotten about what happened against the Super Falcons. They just want to learn from that, knowing that when you're going all attack, you have to take all your chances because the coach said they, they, they were the better team. They had the possession. They had the crosses. They managed the game well, but somehow the chances just didn't come because they didn't have the strikers to finish it up for them. So they don't want to repeat that mistake they make against Nigeria. So they want to go all out and play. It will not be uh, the good thing is the games will be played simultaneously. Mm -hmm. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Uh, 10 p.m. Uh, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. here in you know in Australia, of course, 11 a.m. Nigerian time. It's the same time, so he will not be watching Nigerian game. Obviously, he will also be on the field when Nigeria is played, and because he understands that the job his job is actually on the line, he will obviously want to get that victory. And that was what he said at the presser, you know, when, when he was talking ahead of the game against our Canada. All right. Uh, I want to do something very funny. Usually we get calculators in situations like this. Now we don't have calculators, but I want to drag you down to get calculators. Uh, tomorrow, is there any scenario that can make us start calculating figures? Once we lose more than 2 nil. Wow. Jimmy? I, I do you think we will get... That's what I'm going to do. you I, think I we will think get so. into that situation? I actually think that we will defeat them 3-1. That's my own thinking at this point in time. Um, I feel we have more in our armory to arm them than they actually do us. Okay. So I feel that we don't get to that stage. We start calculating or we start looking at what's happening on the other side. And I think that it's more about the fact that our girls have shown they are made up of 10 quality. Mm -hmm. the, the way they've set up, you know, coming from behind... We saw that even against Australia, we had to come from behind, mm -hmm. score three goals before we considered another one, three, two. And I feel that the way we set up right from the onset, the two matches, is something that gives some level of you know, confidence. Our back line, the way it's always set up, experience and also you know, some level of youthfulness and also the fact that we have that midfield. Yeah. We've seen the likes Butlers. of... That, you know, you just look at it, the midfield and the defence gives you know, some level of confidence. And I think that against the Irish, we don't have too much to fear. Uh, I mean, you, you, you already gave us this. So I'm, mm. I'm, so <laughs> That's I, easy, I don't it's, know it's where... It's scary. <laughs> but, I mean, is it easy to imagine or hard? To me, I think it's hard to To be honest, and I'm not saying this because I'm in Nigeria. I've, I've seen all the teams. Mm. It's hard for me, a draw maybe, it's hard for me to imagine... That we get but into that. as journalists, mm, we have a yeah. job to do, and we have to look at all possible scenarios. Scenario. Three things can happen in a game. Either when you lose, you draw. Yep. But but is that a, is that a likely scenario? Forget the fact that you're a Nigerian. No, uh, you can start your uh, this uh, Spain started with a loss in 2010. 2010, yeah. Um, Argentina started with a loss in mm -hmm. <laughs> last just last, last year. Yeah. So uh, the luck of uh, the, the way your results are arranged is something that always, today now, uh, New Zealand, they were knocked out, mm -hmm. won the first game, lost the second, and drew today. So, uh, the, the, uh, and um, Norway, from nowhere, mm -hmm. got the assist, uh, they needed like five goals, and they got six today. It was not uh, my fixing because they capitalized on the weakness of the, of the opposition. opposition. So, I think the, the, where we're even having this kind of conversation, this generation is supposed to be the next golden generation for the Super Falcons. Mm. But unfortunately, we flopped in Morocco. And that is why uh, all this fear factor is coming in that we don't, even we don't know what to expect from the Super Falcons. The Super Falcons have become so unpredictable now just because of what happened. Uh, they, they run up to the mm -hmm. Nations Cup because Nations. even the Aisha yeah. Bari tournament, we flopped. Yeah, we flopped, yeah. So, right at but, home. But pick the players uh, one, one on one. one, one. Yeah. I think we have players that can actually do this job for us. So, but again, the job is not yet done. We can, we've gotten four, uh, we, four we, 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 you can have teams qualifying with three, just three points. Three points yeah. And you can have teams four points and not and guaranteed. Even six. Even six, even six, even yes. six. If you have a if weeping, three, weeping, three, weeping three, boy, three, exactly, weeping yeah, boy in exactly. the goal. So it's, it's something that can happen. It has happened several in the past. Uh, but tomorrow, I don't, I don't foresee that with the Super Falcon because... Uh, the, uh, the Australians, I doubt if they can get the job done. Uh, they, they found themselves in this position, the French way, in 2002, where they had to rush in uh, and injured us in this day. And of course, it never it didn't work. It didn't I, work. I, I so, think I sort of I disagree think, with Ophel when he says the Australian may not be able to do you know, the needful against the Canadians. I feel, you know, um, the fact that they have, you know, the crowd backing them, mm -hmm. the fact that 
Cecilia also talked about it. The coach knows he's going to lose his job. He doesn't get the job done at this point in time. I think the first level of distrust that happened was when Sam Kerr's injury was, you know, somewhat, you know, kept under wraps and nobody really knew until they announced, okay, she's not going to make it and all that. That's why they feel so embittered about it now. But I feel with the introduction of Sam Kerr and also the girls getting themselves back up, I think they should. Because looking at the quality of the how Canadians the Canadians are, they are the Olympic came champions. against us, they are also Olympic champions. They the Olympic but champions. the Australians, they've got the backing of the home side, the, you know, the, the home fans and all that. And I feel that going for them has to be the fact that they could easily have also, you know, equalized against us. You know, they'll have that at the back of their minds and say, look, let's get it all together. We can actually defeat the Canadians. It's possible. Well, Jimmy, I, I, I think there is no sentiment. You know, mm. uh, prior to South Africa in 2010, no host team had ever existed at the group stage until South, it happened to South Africa. So, yeah, you, you, have, so you, have you, want, you want so your now, status at the New Zealanders? Yeah, because the New Zealanders, they are house. So yeah, I but you can't, compare, like you can't compare Australia and New Zealand in terms of... No, their of... best bet has been a quarterfinal placement. Yeah, but we, so, we, but seen... again, tomorrow against the Olympic champion, I think that mountain is true. I want to say my, my tongue is, <laughs> my tongue is <laughs> tied because I enjoy it. <laughs> I was the two of them are actually top 10 yeah. in women's football, right? All right? And I feel that the Australians, they've got quality players also. Apart from the fact that you have the likes of Sinclair, uh, Carpenter, also the, the likes of Sinclair, Flood, all of them, they will want to prove to the nation that they actually can come good. I don't think that, you know, with all of what they have going for them, they would allow the Canadians to get this one past them. All right, all right, all right. Uh, we're not going to spend all of the time on this show talk about Super Falcons, and it looks like we've done that anyway. Uh, so, uh, Cecilia has been with us, and uh, we don't want to keep her for too long. Let's just go to Cecilia, uh, maybe for a parting shot uh, on the show. Uh, and the question is, you, you've told us the mood in the camp, uh, but you see, uh, the viewers, the people in Nigeria can... Any information they can get, anything they can lay their hands on, uh, it means a lot uh, to them. So, taking it back. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we've seen pictures on social media, we've seen uh, some dance moves and all that. So what are some of the things that, you know, happening in the camp, fun things happening uh, in the camp, uh, things that we wouldn't probably know, aside from you guys over there? Yeah, I think, uh, okay, fun thing, you know, on after the game against Australia, so they have to take out time to go to the zoo, just, you know, see parts of Brisbane. Then from there, they had a pool session and also, you know, just walk around a bit. And we've seen that um, they don't really have much time to do all that. It was just that Friday because, you know, it was more like a rest day for them for the girls to actually stretch their legs and everything. Another fun thing was the red carpet that was actually, you know, done for them. When they were going to play Australia, in the before they left the, the hotel where they're staying, Sofitel, the, the host, so to speak, you know, had to uh, a kind of uh, a send a, a goodwill message for them. And that goodwill was they, they were lined up, you know, all the staff in the hotel was lined up on the side. They, they had this Nigerian flag, you know, right there on their neck. And then, you know, they, they actually, you know, they uh, how do I put it that? They, they applauded them, and then they, that's how they escorted them into. That's how they were escorted into the bus. And then when they came back, there was a red carpet waiting for them. So the red carpet was there, so they also lined up, you know, chanting and you know just welcoming them and everything, playing Nigerian songs and Nigerian music. The players had to dance to it. So that's what you know. That was what happened on that day. So they're really having a fun time. And the good thing about this crop of players, the Super Falcons, is the unity you can see in them, the unity they have in camp, both the new players that are just making their debut. And also, even those that haven't played, I spoke with Mother Gibbs today when she said that she knows she hasn't played, but she's supporting the team. You know, she wants a situation where many times she's given opportunity to play, she will go and do the business. So there's just this unity among them, this these uh, bond among the, the players. You would think they've been together for a long time. You wouldn't know that most of them are you know, playing their very first World Cup. As I mentioned, Modi Gift is one of them. You have the likes of uh, Onumonu, uh, Tony Payne, uh, Michelle Alozier, and so many of them making their okay. in this C World Cecilia, Cup. let me throw this in, because we're about to let you go. Let me throw this in quickly. We're yeah. about to let you go. A lot of people are, okay, where's Deborah Abiodun? How is she now? Has she gotten over uh, the red card? Yeah. And is she, is she very eager to get involved uh, in action again? 
Yeah, of course, once again, that didn't actually happen as well because she got praise for her performance. She performed very well until she got that card. And, you, we, you know, we have uh, Aima Atali Ainde. You also have Rashida Najibade. Those are before her. So it's always hard. We, we don't know what the coach is going to do against Ireland. She may play or she may not, but she's not taking it to heart at all. And when you watch them train and the way they play together, it's just one of those things that she, she actually got him past that red card, you know. She has, she has really gotten past the red card. So she's always, she's, she will be eager to play anytime she's called upon to play. All right. Uh, Cecilia Borogoro, thank you for your time. And hopefully when next we speak, it should be about a victory for the Super Falcons. Yes. Of course, we are waiting for that on Monday. So we're going all the way for three points. That's what is important. All right. Okay, uh, do have a nice time. All right. Now we've come to the end of that segment where we talked about the Super Falcons and everything uh, about their group. And this is just to let you know it was brought to you by Stambic IBTC, the official insurance partner of the Super Falcons. We need to go on a break right about now. We spent a few minutes we have left uh, to talk about football transfers and some of the things happening in your amazing fast pace and rewarding world of sports. The Super Falcons of Nigeria, they're actually having their first training session after that victory against Australia. And from what the players have said, they are really anticipating a good game against the Republic of Ireland on Monday. This night's training is actually to prepare the team for that game, which is 8 p.m. right here in Australia for 11 a.m. Nigerian time. Well, um, it's been great. Um, it's been very amazing. You know, we are happy to be here. And um, before we came here, we had a purpose, and I'm happy at the end of the day we are able to implement everything we've been working on for the past years, for the past months. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the defensive line was kind of cool. I mean, you have us naturally, I mean, marshalling everything. You have us start coming in. I'm talking about the game against Australia, also putting in their best. I mean, the team bonding and the team work. How were you girls able to achieve that? Yeah, you know, um, for the past few months, we've been we've been going for international friendlies. You know, sometimes when you know there is a big task ahead of you, you have to prepare ahead. You know, so the, there is one love in the team. The spirit is high. The morale is high. There is unity. We've been working on this for so many months. You know, and um, I think if 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 we are not able to to put it through, it means that we've not been doing something. So it shows we've been working, and this team is a really good team. Yeah. yeah, now Republic of Ireland is next and you're going to play them on Monday. How are you guys looking forward to that? What are you going to do differently to top the group or oh, get a win out of that? Because okay. with a draw, you can actually go yeah. through. Well, um, I think this will be the toughest game because uh, Ireland, um, they've lost um, two games. So our game against them will be their last game. So they would want to come out strong. They would want to play, uh, play out everything. They would want to get a win before going. And um, to us, this is a game we really need to qualify. We either need a draw or a win. So I think we just have to keep the, the mental cool. We don't need to rush anything. We just have to take our time, do what we know how to do best. And I think we have to work harder, you know, to, to get a win in this game. You get so much accolades you know, when you get that particular scene in the game. Essentially, everyone were talking about it. So does that put pressure on you at this one? No, for me, there's no pressure. Like, I'm right from the training camp. It's been a lot of work putting through. So I think I'm, at this point, I'm, I'm very calm. There's no pressure at all. Yeah, on the maybe, it's great to have you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> all right, I mean, you made, when you made your six World Cup appearance, the Nigerians you know, at the stadium were wowed by what you've achieved. So what was that moment like you for years? We knew you were going to make your six appearance, but when you were on the pitch, coming in, yeah. to finally make that happen. What yeah. was it like for you? Uh, honestly, if I won't lie, I don't want to lie. Uh, when I was on the bench, you know, watching the game, my mind tells me you're going to enter today. So just be ready. I'm always ready though, but that day, I felt it that I'm going to play. So I was on the bench, I was emotional, at the same time, focusing on the game, you know. So when they called me, maybe it's time. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. When I entered the pitch, you know, as my profession, I took that emotion out and let it keep, but it was so, so priceless to me. And um, if I would even cry, I would have cried there. But, you know, as a strong woman that I am, <laughs> I just had to, you know, hold the tears back. But it was priceless. Yes, that moment, you know, like when you now started playing or watching the players 
from the bench. Uh, what do you you might be emotional? They will come to us. Yeah, I, I said, I, like, I wanted to cry, like, watching them and knowing the fact that I, I might go inside and play, and that will make it, you know, six. It's not easy. I know what I went through. I know the battles, the tears, the joy that brought me to this, uh, you know, this stage. So, it was really emotional for me. And uh, first, I'll say I thank God for giving me the strength to hold till this time. I don't want to tell. <laughs> well, yeah, it was like a dream. Not even my dream. It surpassed my dream. You know, it means everything to me. I don't even know how to. I have to describe the feeling, but it means so much to me. Like. All right, welcome back. I was this long where we caught up uh, with uh, the players and we listened to all of them. And of course, she was able to, you know, get the training, uh, the one uh, they had, and of course, as they prepare for uh, the game tomorrow. All right, we have a few minutes left, and um, we're, we're going to try to use it uh, judiciously. Uh, let me start with Jimmy. Even though we're pressed for time, you were talking about Terence Crawford, and um, I mean, let me allow you to say what you want to say. A masterful performance by Crawford, you know. Um, I think the two best welterweights since Agla. And let us. <laughs> I think it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, uh, except of course you have another set of you know boxers that have been better than them in that particular category. But um, for me, I but saw what kept them apart for this long. I mean, because it's always been the noise it's and all. Usually the what promoters and also you know the promoters, the management teams, and also the boxers themselves. But I think they're not going beyond the prime. And what we saw basically was the best of boxing. Um, you know, it was. Crawford doing the needful in the night before the dropping you know, his opponent dropping him, three times. Dropping him three times. Uh, for me, I'd felt that Errol Spence would have been the better boxer on the day, but you know, I was I was thrilled at the fact that Crawford took him out masterfully. I mean, this one of the best performances I've seen in a long time, and it was so exciting to see the way he counter punched, the yeah. series of combinations, okay. you know. Uh, 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 okay, you didn't for, for, for time, but like like a bout uh, that lived up. To the hype, some will say. Mm. Yeah, like I think was he Okonkwo in things fall apart and never had his back to the ground. Uh, mm. So so was Spence, and uh, unfortunately, after 20 fights, he got <laughs> he was punched down. It was shocking was, to see on, on three occasions. But again, um, I think let me just make it a little bit biblical. Uh, they say when the old temple was rebuilt, um, the older generation were willing, and they the went. younger generation because it was not as glorious as the previous mm. one, but the, Younger generation were yeah, like, oh, oh this defend. is good. So when Jimmy starts uh, referring to Agla and Crawford, I think uh, it's not, it's not, it's not ideal. It's not ideal. Uh, that yes, he has done well, but that comparison. No, 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 what I'm saying is, since the time, the time of Leonard and Agla, no, yeah, I mean, what I'm saying basically is, you haven't seen any other world of it gone against themselves like this. The two undisputed, one was unified, the other one had the WBU, the other one had the... There was the, a lot of the, hype, a lot, a of, lot of hype. A lot of hype. This one had a, a 39 bout that he had, and he goes 40-0. 40, zero. 40 zero. Ken wants to say something. Ah. Ken, we're, we're pressed for time. I know you're going to help us. This is probably <laughs> going to be your party shot. I know you wanted to talk about this, unfortunately. The, we got carried away with the Super Falcons. Uh, but your thoughts is going to be your party shot, because we're about to wrap things up on the show. And there's a mild drama going on here. I don't know where you sit <laughs> uh, uh, in between both of them in terms of uh, the fight. Uh, um, well, I don't know. Um, bound for bound. <laughs> uh, two with ca undisputed champions into a category. Uh, sometimes you, you, these things are subjective. But then I uh, will look at the stats and let it tell. Clarence uh, Gray uh, Crayford, 40 fights. 31 knockouts, um, unbeaten, still unbeaten, uh, beaten and unbeaten in the process. So, <laughs> but then it, 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 at any time, at any point in time, it is the fights or you know or the event uh, that that are just taking place that takes the shine. So for now, pound for pound rating, because we talk about the Ring Magazine, you talk about uh, um, 
TCN. We talk about you know the, 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 the three six five five boxers. A lot of a lot of you know most of them coming to read boxers and tell you pan for pan who is the best in the world. In no time you know it, it's seldom they, they all agree on one. But in this case, I don't want to say they are great fighters. Uh, uh, Clarissa Shields, you know, they had, had done it in the female version. You know, uh, uh, being two weight category on display fighter. Here we are seeing Crawford, the two weight on display fighter. You know, uh, but then. Time and again, depends on who you are fighting. People have said, if Tyson, if Tyson, uh, Mike Tyson fight, had fought at Fort Mandalay, who would have beaten? It is those in front of you that you fight. In this case, we will, this thing will go on. But if you want me to give you my, my last uh, uh, words on this, I just want to say that um, CC pointed out something about our players who have not played, who are hungry. And specifically, she said something about you know, money, money, uh, a gift. Money gift. And then uh, I just want to, uh, guys to remember this. In 1994, 19, 19, uh, 19, uh, 19, uh, 94, 1994 in Tunisia, when we won the AFCON, uh, Emmanuel Amunike never played at all until the final. He was the joker. He came in in that final and buried Zambia. Uh, and, but before then, in 1979, uh, there is a club in England called the Nottingham Forest in England here. Uh, that team played in their first ever European final. Three, three months earlier, they signed Trevor Francis. Trevor Francis made his debut. At that final against Malmo, he scored the only goal, and that is how they became the European champion before they defended it back to back. So we might be seeing that uh, probably as we are progressing, I hope probably we will be, we'll be introducing jokers one after the other. And I want to see those jokers will see us through. I want to I want to be among those while you guys are dancing in Lagos, I'll be dancing in the streets of England as if Super Falcon qualify for the second round tomorrow. I drop my pen as usual at this stage. I let you guys you know, pick up the gauntlet and continue the show. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ken. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should just pick, pick it up from here. Uh, <laughs> if I can. All right. Uh, I, I know we're going to be chased out of the studio now, but Jimmy wants to talk from Lawan, and it's a crime if I don't allow him to. Our party short. I think it's all over. It's, it's just all over. Even last, even last week, we were talking about the bit of over. intent. Yeah. And okay, me said, okay, look, Lewis Hamilton, yes, maybe on pole, mm -hmm. but for me, it still didn't happen for him. It didn't happen. I mean, I, I felt it was shocking Still because ordinarily, you know, Hungarian uh, GP, you have whoever is on pole get to win. Almost. It didn't happen for Lewis Hamilton. Now we're having Verstappen again win the sprint race. Uh, though he's having a uh, five place the penalty, penalty. Leclerc on pole. I tip Verstappen again to do, you know, wonders. At this point in time, like you rightly said. It looks like he's all done and dusted because there's absolutely no Nothing, one yeah. challenging uh, Verstappen at this point in time. Uh, anything to add? Yeah, yeah for him, uh, Belgium or land is home. Mm -hmm. um, his home, so and, and you know, that is, okay, is in love with the Dutch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. No, I, I think, he's an uh, orange man. I think I, I, I saw the Dutch. Mm. I saw them uh, in uh, Abu Dhabi. Was it four four years ago? Or so. Okay. Coming to support Verstappen even when he was exactly when he was even not. But if you, mm. <laughs> just, you need to see, and the that was one of the most glorious races of his life. Like, exactly, all they monitored his career. Yes, from, yes, exactly. Yes, for them it was like this is our golden uh, kid. So since then I started all keeping right. tabs. You know they, they know how to nurture that golden generation. Let, let, let me do this to you guys as we <laughs> as we get set to go. By the time we come next week Sunday, do you still do you think the I said three? Do you one. think I, I, I'm uh, sticking the, with it? Three one. Do you think the Super Falcons will still be in there? That's why I said three, three one. I did, I did three one. They should be in it. They should still be in it. They should. Okay. Yeah, we should still be having a conversation with Cecilia about the Super Falcons. Okay. So we love to see Cecilia on our screen. <laughs> okay. Let me ask the question <laughs> in a different way. <laughs> How far do you think they will go? After seeing two matches, um, quarterfinals, hoping they get to um, avoid um, England. England. Okay. I think for now, we should be satisfied with the quarterfinal place. Wow. We should go. So we are seeing ourselves beyond the round of 16. No, I, I think we should not lose focus, focus or something. Of, yeah. uh, we, are, we are talking about Monday Gift and certain other players. Abiodunla cannot find his way into that team anymore. Mm. This should be the golden generation, but because we've had uh, a, mixture of, a mixture of bad results in mm -hmm. the past, past yeah. that is why we're having this kind Our of confidence. confidence. Is not yeah, it's those it's players, player for player, I, this should be like a golden generation. Especially when you consider what you have in all of the departments. 
Is it your goalkeeper? Mm. Is it the defense line? Is it the midfield that you've got a lot of talent on the bench? Maybe our attack has not been too, you know, inspiring. But when you consider the totality of that team, we should be inspired by that. that so the confidence people are now reposing in the team is not misplaced, in your opinion? It cannot be misplaced. Even in the coach at this point in time, because you are as good as your last game. We've seen the two performances. We are, we are inspired by it. Result gives you confidence. Exactly. Right. Results. Only that we should not go the route of the last uh, AFCON where one or like three matches, three matches are, which was the best coach of the group stage and we got knocked out by a very weak Tunisian side. All right, uh, that's not going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it does. All right, guys, I, I had fun, but we had to go. Jimmy, I want to thank yeah, you for your time on the yeah. show. Mm. Uh, hopefully we'll do this again Definitely some other time. And uh, Noquemi? It's my pleasure being here. All right. Okay, that's the show today. Uh, China Sports Sunday, we hope we were able to make your day. Uh, we hope uh, you enjoyed every bit of what we did uh, today. So we're going to be here again next week, and hopefully we'll still be talking about the Super Falcons uh, of uh, Nigeria. Enjoy the rest of the day. We'll be back again next week.